I'm delighted to join you to talk uh, an incredible uh, piece of uh, cinema today. I'm excited. John, why don't you start? Since it's uh, fresher in your mind. So here's what I like about this film. I'm going to start with what okay. I... I'm going to say, here's what's great about the film uh, Godzilla versus Kong. It's that there was a meeting where everybody pitched ideas. Yes. And the answer was yes. <laughs> of course it was. Yes. You want... Hey, um, Mecha Godzilla. Yes. Uh, uh, hovercraft. Yes. Journey to the center of the earth. Yes. Kid oh. hackers. Yes. Conspiracy theories about tap water and lizard people. I love yes. it. Yes. The answer is yes. A, a defibrillator for King Kong. Needed that. Yes. Had that. Yes. I love it. Uh, I will just, to add on to what you're saying, first of all, it, this being a secret team up movie, uh, I loved because, you know, much like having to much like watching your parents fight watching king kong and godzilla fight was just kind of like painful for me on an emotional level so i was happy mm -hmm. to see uh mecha godzilla emerge from the mountain and uh, you know under hong kong uh it, that was delightful i i love the fact that i think this is one of the biggest come-ups for podcasts in pop culture history mm -hmm. um brian tyree henry's uh character uh, Bernie working for Apex Cybernetics while also for years running a secret podcast that leaks Apex's uh, secrets onto it, it, just out into the world is amazing. Well, Stitcher. It was only Stitcher, I think. It, it couldn't have. I, I would love to know the platforms and kind of like the revenue model. I guess that's for mm -hmm. later. But just the idea that like Bernie is out here for years doing this podcast, Apex is like, who is doing this? How can we ever figure this out? And two children figure it out in like 35 minutes uh, is great. And I just love the idea of Bernie like throwing to like uh, to like, uh, you know, an egg, an egg substitute product, like in the middle of dropping all these top secret facts to me is is just part of my headcanon. And <laughs> uh, and I think also. This is the biggest come up for hollow earth theory since John Quincy Adams, uh, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, got mm -hmm. behind the theory in the early 19th century. Couple thoughts. First of all, yeah. I like that this movie is like your squid in the whale. I think that that's really cool. <laughs> um, uh, I will say, look, as I approach this film, I've I've seen every pre every previous, I've seen all of these movies. But it's it's a fact of their creation that you can't retain yes. anything that happened. And so You're I not, did go right. into this movie thinking that I was going to spend time with my two favorite characters from the universe, the uh, <laughs> the, the GKU, that's the Godzilla <laughs> Kong universe. Yes. Uh, and it is King Kong and Vera Farmiga. And then I'm like sitting in this <laughs> thing and I'm like, wait a second. I don't see my girl Vera Farmiga that's and I don't even know if she's alive anymore. It's I can't remember. I can't remember. Shouts to Kyle Chandler uh, getting the bag for, you know, saying like approximately 10 lines, disappearing for an hour, and then coming back. I, another thing I love about this movie is just, you know, Rebecca Hall, Kyle Chandler, all these really talented actors delivering lines like, but if we release Kong, Godzilla will find him. Um, uh, he died because he encountered a gravity reversal. <laughs> Kong bows to no one. <laughs> um, I also just don't, Kong, and Kong bows to no one. Kong does not bow to anyone. That's Kong, true. That's fact. something that is true. That's a fact in this. He does not do that. Um, he does speak sign language now, which worked on me. That works. It wor so I, I like what they did here in terms of making humanity and corporations the real evil. Much, you know, this is like a tried and true uh, trope going back to alien and aliens. Um, but I loved that Damien Bashir's character, Walter, you know, the CEO of, of Apex Cybernetics, who's created this incredible Mecha Godzilla uh, creation, probably spent $3 trillion into a slush fund, you know, like... 
uh, board members being like, where is all this money going to this like secret project? I can't tell you right now. But I just love the fact that he is just drunk throughout this movie. He is in the control room throwing back glass after glass after glass of scotch like this is Mad Men or something. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's an earth emergency, multiple kaijus fighting in one of the great cities of the world, and you're shit-faced as we're about to launch your like great creation, powered, by the way, by a power source that nobody is really sure if it's going to work. Should you be hammering it this time? I I knew that I was going... First of all... I knew that I was going to watch his own creation eat him. Spoiler. Yeah. Uh, I knew it from a specific moment in the film, and that is the <laughs> moment where he wore his um, jacket like a cape. Yes. Couple, couple key. Yeah. That's just a rule. If a billionaire wears a jacket like a cape, yeah. you're going to, that's bad guy. Going to get, going to get, going to get eaten. You're raising an interesting point here, which is was there any conversation at any point in the development of this film where someone said, hey, do you think we have one too many characters? <laughs> like, do, like, the, every, every group was a group of three. Yes. Everywhere you looked. And it did, the film also does follow um, the rule of ships, which is if three <laughs> ships go on a mission. Right. Three ships go on a mission. One's getting one's getting blown up on the way in, and one's getting blown up on the way out. Right, the Nina, uh, the Maria, and the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. I think that uh, first of all, incredibly bad plan. So we're gonna wait. Hold on, let me get this straight. We're going to go on a multi-day cruise with King Kong just chained to the deck, and that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're going. What's the problem? I just feel like this is, it just feels like there's a lot of holes in that plan. The holes which were then torn open by the attack of Godzilla and the fact that, uh, you know, no one thought, should we let King Kong out so that he can defend himself while he's chained to the deck of this ship? Uh, it, just incredible stuff. Also, um, you know, the shock on everyone's face when they realize the, uh, the little girl can, like, sign language with King Kong is, is an amazing moment that, like, all these highly paid scientists have been working for years. Like, Rebecca Hall's, uh, Dr. Andrew's response to this is this weird, like, jealousy of, like, I've been working with Kong for years, built this, you know, biodome to house him and keep him safe and so that he feels like he, you know, he can run and be free. And I've been working with him in, you know, just like trying different things, feeding him. And then this little girl comes around and she can like, and she, he will communicate with her. What do, what do I have to do to communicate with Kong? Well, I'd also just say this, this movie also follows, um, I would call it the Congo principle. And that is that, um, <laughs> good movie. It, it, it has a similar issue, which is these are the worst fucking scientists in the world who Terrible. show zero curiosity about anything they encounter. None. There's now in the film Congo, and again, this is obviously uh, very important, so I'm not I'm going to take the time to talk about it. Uh, and it's that that uh, the, the 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 star of that film is Laura Linney, but because of '90s misogyny, the camera always finds the dopey scientist. It can't understand the movie itself doesn't understand <laughs> that Laura Linney is the star. Can't accept it. Doesn't make. Yeah. Does not compute. So it goes to the dumb scientist who's terrible, but he is an expert in gorillas. Uh, he is in the home of gorillas, and right. then there's gorilla sounds. Yes. Uh, and he's like, "What is that? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What is that noise? What are they, do what are they doing? What's going on?" Um, you know, like not to pick nits in this movie, which is again primarily a vehicle for incredible CGI. That's what mm -hmm. it is. If you wanted to watch a you know thousand foot uh, gorilla fight a thousand foot uh, nuclear powered lizard fight a thousand uh, like maybe twelve hundred foot mechagodzilla, this is for you. Don't worry about the plot. That said, when uh, when uh, Skarsgård. Dr. Nathan lands the uh, defibrillator ship on Kong, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and then sets it off. He then mm -hmm. presumably has to jump 300 feet down off of Kong's chest to street level. He does this in like a cut, in like yeah, yeah. A, a half a second cut, just gets clear uh -huh. of the blast and jumps right. down to street level off of Kong's chest. 
That was a thing I had a problem with. Again, this is a movie about I mean, gigantic it, kaijus. Uh, first of all, uh, he did have a slight limp. If you notice, he does say, oh, my leg. So <laughs> he did, right. he tweaked it's his, covered. did tweak the angle. There's an, in-world, <laughs> there's an in-world explanation. He does hurt his leg ever so yeah. slightly. He's like, oh, ah, my leg. I hurt my leg when I jumped down from the giant gorilla. The um, the scale of the beast obviously vacillates wildly from film to film. Uh, they yeah. are a, they are whatever size you need them to be in the moment. They <laughs> they sometimes like I, it's just remarkable how different they are depending. Like you know, in some they're giant. They're the size of the biggest skyscrapers in right. Hong Kong. And other times the the little girl, the finger. Right. They it's do the, the finger it. touch. So I think um, that's just. Uh, I think he got smaller for the jump down. And I guess my other thing is, Hong Kong, it's done now, right? Just forget it. Scrap scrap the city as a whole. We're not moving back. Like, there's, I I don't see any reason to return to this place. It's absolutely finished. We're talking like a million and a half dead, probably. There's a moment earlier in the film. They clearly wrestled with, so King Kong doesn't kill anybody in the movie. Uh, I was watching closely. No, no fatalities. But they clearly wrestled with how deadly Godzilla could be and still have you root for him, which is why they make a very pointed uh, news clip earlier where they say eight dead in Pensacola. And they clearly was like, all right, he's, people clearly had to die. Right. Let's say it's eight. And then he can like those are just people. Godzilla <laughs> murdered eight people. Collateral damage. Like at, no, We now know Godzilla was on a mission, but those right. people died not knowing. A lot of people right. will never believe it. Godzilla, like, that's a lot of, you know, no, I, I mean, no moral like, quant- there's a little moral issue there. Hong Kong is, is completely leveled. Absolutely wrecked. Multiple buildings down. Huge holes drilled to the center of the earth. Uh, a large hillside mountain like blown up as mecha godzilla emerges from it faces of of monsters like slammed through buildings mm-hmm. i just feel yeah. like it's it's a wash like don't even rebuild just leave it as is i don't like uh, if they come back with 32 dead in hong kong it's a joke <laughs> oh no it's um it they're definitely uh, it has a man of steel element yes, here like a lot of lot of destruction and there's something that always happens with these films which is there is like as with any natural disaster be it a no. tornado or Godzilla attack you see it in the skyline certain buildings miraculously spared you yeah. know they're fine some rays, some big slices take, taken out of them. But I'm always, I'm always bothered after the fighting is over. Everything's cool. Godzilla mm-hmm. and King Kong, they're chill. He drops the axe. But even in that little <laughs> departure, even in that final moment where they say, I doff my hat to you, sir. Right, and yeah. they say, I bid you adieu to the sea with you, to the center of the earth with me. Right. They do several billion dollars of property damage on yeah. exiting. And yeah. nobody's like, just stay still. Just please stay still. Right. Please stay still. We'll fly you out. We have we we actually we did King Kong math, and we can lift you with twelve helicopters. You're the size of a skyscraper, but we can lift you with twelve helicopters. So let us just lift you out of here because literally every time you put your foot down, that's a huge insurance problem for us. <laughs> every I time mean, you, ra- you raise a great uh, you raise a great point, which is like who okayed this plan that Godzilla would fight King like King Kong fighting Godzilla is that's the solution to this. Well. <sighs> I think it's that I think that's that they don't know why Godzilla is attacking, but they think that there's an energy source at the center of the earth that if they take King Kong, they can't they can't they don't know the route. Right. They don't know the route to the center of the earth, even though every time they, the time movement, like these people are like, I'm in Pensacola. Look, I'm in Hong Kong. I, Hi. Right. Here I am I in took, Hong Kong. Yeah. I went through the middle. But uh, what I like. So they get to the center of the earth. So yes. that King Kong can get his, um, At, he needs his axe, axe. right? You it's a very important axe. Uh, but that was it. They get the axe, and then what? But their plan to have the axe is foiled because Apex, um, right. via the cape wearing maniac, they they steal the juice. They steal the juice. The power source, right? They figure out the, how to harness the power of these of these minerals in the center of the earth. 
how to and charge then, it. Right. The, the, uh-huh. They're charged minerals. And then they use that to power the brain that's going to power the Mecha Godzilla. But right. keep in mind, only works on Wi-Fi. It, there is no offline mode for Mecha Godzilla. There right. is a no copyright cables. protection. Right. If you know, this is like you know, this is like you know, some. If 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 the PlayStation Network cannot reach Mecha Godzilla, you do not have access to your character. You cannot build your character. You must be online with Mecha Godzilla right. to get your points, to get new weapons, to do your unlocks. You cannot. Mecha Godzilla does not work offline, and people need to understand that. They, understand. they don't understand well, I, that right now, but you have to understand. You have to be connected to the network. To be fair to uh, Apex, they launched in beta. Uh, they I, there were a lot of issues going right up to launch. Number one, power source. How do we power it? They didn't know. Pilot or no pilot, they had the pilot inside the Monster Zero skull. That seemed like it was going to work. Turned out there were some issues with, like, the Mm -hmm. latent consciousness of Monster Zero, which nobody had kind of figured out. Like, there were there's still a lot of tweaks and still a lot of of uploads. Mm -hmm. Like, we're hoping for Mechagodzilla software, like, version 2 will fix some of these issues. But I think, to be fair to Apex, again, they launched in beta. This is what it sounds like. What you're saying is that this is a film about crunch culture, uh, right. and you know, <laughs> and like you know, they yeah. set for themselves a deadline, and they come did. hell or high water, they were gonna hit it. And they got they engineers on the ground being like, "Hey, man, uh, we've never even turned this thing on, and you want to put, you want to put, you want to put this man in it, right?" We literally, you literally sent me an email and said, get down here. We're downloading, we're downloading the energy source from the center of the earth. It's happening today. Right do now. You have, do you have any solutions to this? Like, so maybe we should, what would your fixes for the, uh, the kaiju problem be as we go forward into this, uh, the Kong versus Godzilla extended universe? Um, you know, it's very similar to the Batman versus Superman problem in that uh, that was a problem. They just had to have a conversation. Like right. Batman versus Superman, they're Martha. fighting throughout the film. They right. just needed to say like, hey, my hey mom, we're two- we have yeah, moms. My mom too. We're two guys with pa- moms. Yeah. You we know, have like- moms. And I didn't realize you had a mom. You didn't realize I had a mom. And now right. that we both are talking like guys with moms, we both have moms. We can stop fighting. Right. Um, and uh, it's really like, the the problem is with Godzilla. It's really unclear how smart Godzilla is because sometimes Godzilla is operating at an incredibly sophisticated level. Like I need <laughs> to destroy so this computer because it's connected right. to this mech, and I I can track yeah. things moving around the world. And yet right. somehow doesn't dawn on Godzilla that like hey maybe this King Kong dude maybe, maybe we could te- like why yeah. why are we assuming we're not we're, why the assumption to fight. Right. Why the assumption to combat? And I don't understand that. These are my notes uh, for the governments of the world as we go forward into this uh, mm-hmm. uh, Kong versus Godzilla extended universe and this continuing problem of, of giant monsters emerging from various parts of the earth to wreck cities. One, uh, let's invest in infrastructure. I think it's never been a better time to do it in a fictional Mm -hmm. universe than now. Look at the destruction that has been wrought, particularly around the seacoast. We need to start tackling these problems, and I think we tackle these problems. uh, You know, the knock-on effects of bolstering the shoreline will have, you know, added benefits as we move into, uh, you know, some of the more severe effects of global warming. Uh, You know, also, like, buy buy real estate inland. And two, Mm -hmm, I think... mm -hmm. My my second big note for the armies of the world: stop firing the missiles at Godzilla. They don't do anything. You're just I, making them mad. I'm so glad you bring this point up. Don't do it I'm anymore. So gl- if you're gonna if you're gonna come at the king, you don't yeah. miss. You can't. Yeah. These things it don't even doesn't even slow him down. It doesn't do anything. He doesn't even he he. It, they don't even make him itch. Literally nothing happens. Stop doing it. You're just wasting tens of thousands of dollars worth of munitions. Mm-hmm firing them at monsters that don't feel them just don't do it anymore figure something else out that's all like like think outside the box that's all those are my two notes i think those are really smart i think it's really smart um i also think you're right to think about investing in infrastructure to kind of harden our defenses especially at a time when interest rates are low 
Um, yeah. Now is the time to do it. <laughs> uh, I also think there should be um, some kind of government backstop because I just don't think yes. we can expect individuals to bear the brunt of these kaiju attacks. Uh, you can't Absolutely predict like not. insurance rates must be astronomical. I like I don't understand how you can be in any kind of city in Asia and expect to get insurance yes. against kaiju attacks, given how frequently they're happening. That's a very good point. And listen, we got we dodged a bullet this time. We got lucky that uh, that a podcaster and two children managed to brute force a extremely sophisticated computer by pouring uh, water on it. Alcohol, um, but yeah, but that, no, I see your point. Uh, I'm sorry, it was alcohol. So yes, excuse me. Uh, but that won't happen again. We got lucky this time, folks. It won't happen again. Let's really think about a comprehensive problem, uh, you know, a, a partnership between uh, world governments and the private sector to really just kind of like harden our defenses, fix this issue, and maybe we can fix the environment too. No, I, I think that that's right. And the other thing I would say is let's do our best to kind of learn as much as we can about these magnificent, uh, yes. unique miraculous creatures at the center of the universe before King Kong literally kills every single one he encounters. Like, yes. I don't, like, I don't, like, can we just get some, get some scientists down there? Because literally it's like, how many yeah. times do I have to watch King Kong destroy a fucking dinosaur? Like, it's a dinosaur. Right. Can we, it's like, can we see how it moves around first? That thing was know, amazing. Like, oh my God, there's a flying dinosaur stinger. Ah, oh, Kong killed it. Kong, Kong just like, are murdered these, it. It's dead it's now. It's not clear how many of these there are. I mean, I, I, because every movie he's destroying a new kind of beast and then we never see yeah. that beast again. So my it's assumption gone. is that each one of these in encounters is an extinction. Yes. Let's stop that. Let's make like, sure that you're doesn't new happen. Here. That's a great note. You're a con, you're a, you're a colonist. You're a conquistador. You came, you came from Skull <laughs> Island to the That's center right. of the earth, a place you remember vaguely may never have been. Your first instinct, <laughs> right. Kong, is to kill anything you encounter. Great movie. Fun Great time. movie. Wait, I want to see I if I have any it. final thoughts. Oh, yeah. uh, I have one unforgivable sin here, which is, hey, sure. we can make jokes about lizard people, all right, even though, uh, but can we not scare people off of tap water here? Can we just, yeah, can I mean, we stop right. with that? Yeah. And also, I'll, I will say um, one other thing. At the end of the film, when two children have just been through a traumatic event that they'll be in therapy with for the rest of their life, and <laughs> Kyle Chandler uh, hugs Enola Holmes... Uh, <laughs> and then and then says, shut up, Josh, to the other little boy. Like, I know he's the comic relief, but he's got but, a, he's got a heart in there. Bring him yes. in for a fucking hug. I, I agree. Four uh, stars. Poor, <laughs> please. Uh, Josh, uh, much like Enola Holmes herself, had legitimately just watched uh, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 people die uh, mm -hmm. under the uh, feet of gigantic monsters. So just. A moment of tenderness. I would say uh, my final thoughts are, you know, I just enjoy these movies. Uh, I, more than ever, I need something to watch that just I don't have to think about too much. And this was absolutely the case. More monsters fighting monsters. And Every teaming time. up with other monsters. And that would be my note, which is, hey, any moment they're not fighting each other uh, in the middle of a city is, uh, uh, oh, is is you've missed a moment. Let's get these. Yes. I need a little less backstory on the podcast. A little more. Don't need that. A little more Kong Godzilla action. I will say, though, a great joke <laughs> is Bernie saying, I thought I was going to die with adults, but OK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hoping to no, I, was, I was hoping to die with adults, but OK, which is pretty funny. Pretty funny uh, joke about dying with a bunch of children. Yes. Fun movie. Great film.